Vladimir Putin to make Russia great again. And I, I, what I don't understand... He's been a lot harsher on Putin than Obama was, by the way. Harsher on Putin? You got, he, Not in terms of his rhetoric, in he terms of his actions. He has, armed, he has armed the people of Ukraine with deadly weaponry, which Obama would not do. 200 Russian soldiers were killed in Syria by U.S. forces under Donald Trump, not under Barack yeah, Obama. That, it was Barack Obama who was saying to Dmitry Medvedev that he wanted to provide him with flexibility in 2012. It, Crimea was annexed under Barack Obama. Ben Shapiro in the liberal lion's den this week with Bill Maher, the editor-in-chief of DailyWire.com, joins me now. Now, I think the only reason you really stumped him there, Ben, was because he was high. He smokes before the show <laughs> we're hearing. That might have uh, accounted for him not being able to respond that quickly. But I want to talk to you about the top three SCOTUS picks that President Trump's ruminating about. Tell me what your assessment is of Brett Kavanaugh, who seems to be the early establishment insider front runner. So I'm a little bit dicey on Brett Kavanaugh, and, and the reason is not just because he's sort of the Bush insider pick. He's obviously very close with the Bush team. He was one of the, the forces behind the selection of John Roberts. But there are two specific cases in which Brett Kavanaugh uh, has, has, I think, done less than, than originalists would like. So in one particular case, he denied jurisdiction on Obamacare because he said that Obamacare was actually a tax. It was the first time anybody had made the argument that Obamacare was a tax rather than a fine. And as you'll recall, that was the logic that ended up being used by Chief Justice Roberts in determining that Obamacare was, in fact, legal under the Constitution. So the, the original logic for that came from a Kavanaugh dissent uh, in a case called Seven Well, that's not There's a good thing. Case. Very concerning to a lot of people. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's another case called Priest for Life in which Kavanaugh suggests that the government had a compelling government interest in providing contraceptive care via insurance to folks. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of critics who suggest that that, that case uh, is, is a little bit of evidence that he takes too seriously the government's stated interests in uh, particular leftist social issues. But he is considered a, a strong conservative choice. The Wall Street Journal editorial page endorsed him. Uh, Matt Schlapp, uh, American Conservative Union, has also endorsed him. It wouldn't be a, a bad pick. You're saying we could do better. And one of the people I've heard you discuss is Amy Barrett, who I think now a lot of the social conservatives and the the uh, constitutional conservatives are really getting behind at the last minute. She seemed to be surging. What are you hearing about her? Uh, so the, the truth is that Coney Barrett's actual judicial resume is very short because she's only been on a federal circuit court for about a year ever since she had those really contentious hearings with Democrats where they accused her of having the doctrine live loudly within her and Catholicism was going to rule the day and all this kind of nonsense. Uh, so uh, what we know about her is that she, she's written a lot uh, in terms of academic writing. Uh, a lot of her academic writing has centered on originalism and textualism. She's a big supporter of the doctrines and, and philosophies of Justice Scalia. She's obviously personally very right. pro-life. Uh, and, uh, and so yeah, and she and she's, clerked again, for Scalia and she's only she what, 46 years old. So that would Correct. be a very, very long time on the bench if she ever was appointed and Catholic person. Uh, like you said, an originalist really interprets the Constitution as it was written. Um, and now we're hearing about Raymond Kethledge. Now, Raymond Kethledge, the third person, he was the runner up to Gorsuch. And um, now he's making a late surge, too. He clerked for Kennedy, uh, University of Michigan guy. What do you know about him? Well, so Kethledge's resume is quite good. Uh, his, his decisions are very strong. They're well-worded. Uh, he, he tends to write strong opinions. I, I would say that Brett Kavanaugh's opinions are very uh, politically inclined in the sense that he's attempting to create sort of cohesion on the court. Uh, Kethledge's opinions are, are a lot more kind of punch you in the nose opinions. Uh, he has a very strong record on the Second Amendment in particular. Uh, he also has a very strong record with regard to something called Chevron deference, which is the idea that when an administrative agency makes a judgment that that can still be, the, the, the Chevron deference suggests it shouldn't be overruled by the judiciary. He says the judiciary is a separate branch and the judiciary should overrule what the judiciary has to overrule, which I think is correct. Okay. I think Kethledge is, is a strong candidate. Okay, so if you were to rank the most conservative to the least conservative, or the person that you would like to see on the bench the most, you probably would choose Barrett, number one. I'm hearing maybe Kethledge two, Kavanaugh three. Do I have that right? That's that's right, yeah. Okay, but all, all solid picks um, to replace Justice Kennedy, who was the swing justice. All right, now. I think that's right. right. I think that's right. Although I would say that the best, the best shot that one of them ends up being Roberts is probably Kavanaugh. Yeah, Roberts, not, not the best, but still really not that bad. Um, and this new memo we're seeing uh, from Peter Strzok, our old friend at the FBI, something that we've just uncovered. You know, I don't know why this didn't come up in the IG report or any of the other requests to turn over these 
memos and text messages, there was something that said, hurry the F up to pressure to probe the Trump campaign. And this was in the fall 2016. So he's talking about hurrying this thing up, obviously politically motivated and electorally motivated. What is your thinking behind that? It's just more and more nonsense or what? It's not a shock at all. I mean, Michael Horowitz in that IG report suggested that Peter Strzok was making decisions to privilege the the timing of the Trump investigation above the Hillary investigation. In fact, one of the reasons they say that the Hillary investigation, the reopening of the Hillary email investigation was delayed until late October is because Strzok wanted to place focus on the Trump investigation because he wanted to get it done before the actual election took place. Strzok is a political actor. There's no question about this. And even Horowitz essentially suggested as much in that much maligned IG report. So. Uh, it, it looks, you know, if, if, the, if the FBI was not out to get President Trump, it certainly looks like Peter Strzok was. Right. And he was too much of a political hack to be on the Mueller team. I don't see why that reasoning wouldn't, um, you know, disallow him from being on the Comey team. So either way, he's poisoned it. It's just a matter of how far they're going to take that. Now, um, the DNC chairman, Perez. Um, he was asked about this woman out of the Bronx, uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who is an Abolish ICE activist, an avowed socialist. And here is what the chairman of the DNC said about an avowed socialist. Listen. I have three kids, two of whom are, are daughters. Uh, one just graduated college, one is in college, and they were both uh, uh, texting me about their excitement over Alexandria because you know, she really she represents the future of our party. So if socialism is the future of the Democratic Party, Ben, I don't think the Democratic Party has a future because that's not good. Uh, well, you know, I, I think the Democratic Party obviously has moved radically left in terms of identity politics and intersectionality. And uh, Ocasio-Cortez represents sort of the merger of the intersectional wing of the Democratic Party with the Bernie Sanders socialist wing of the Democratic Party. And while it's easy to dismiss the socialism of the Democratic Party, the truth is that we live in a country that tends to swing back and forth between the parties. It's, it's not good for the country that the Democratic Party has moved so far to the left that they're now outflanking some European left-wing parties because you have to imagine at some point they, these, these jokers could be back in power. Well, I mean, remember what happened with Barack Obama. He took the country way far left, and you saw a huge rebellion with the Tea Party. They destroyed the Democratic bench nationally. Uh, they're totally out of power. So uh, we saw what happened there. You know, I just can't believe it. Hopefully it doesn't swing that far to the left, Ben. Got to run. Thanks so much.